All right. Before the break, does anyone have any questions? Does anyone have any questions? Uh, are you may, are you planning on making ports high or low level? Define high and low level. What is high and low level? Uh, so why why your folder shrink for 8.5 to 7.5 gigabytes? Well, because porn is a consumable, right? Every time you consume the porn, the size of the porn folder reduces. So that's why it is reducing. Uh, so, okay. So, what is this? This is not like an AST then. Is it like a control flow graph? Yes, it is a control flow graph. And in fact, our language is concatenative language. And as far as I know, concatenative languages don't have a control flow, uh, like don't have an AST, right? Uh, I don't like I don't speak for all of the concatenative languages, but all of the concatenative languages I saw, they literally don't have AST. They just have a sequence of instructions. Uh, that's what we have. Um, mm -mm. Mm, looks kind of Linux uh, Linux distro tree. Yeah, it is. Um, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Will you add? An interpreter CLI. What is an interpreter CLI? Our language already has an interpreter, uh, right? So it has a simulation mode. So uh, you have a hello world, right? So example, example, hello world, fourth. You can compile this entire thing and it produces the native executable, or you can simulate it. And in that case, it just like literally interprets it. So we do have an interpreted mode for that language. So because it is implemented uh, in Python, Python, it's actually pretty useless because it makes it incredibly slow. Uh, but as we rewrite Python itself, uh, I think the simulation mode will become useful again because it will be way faster. Um, interpreter CLI repl. Oh, you mean repl? Okay, so you mean shell thingy. Um, I don't know. I don't really need it right now. So, but maybe at some point I will implement it. It's not a priority right now. Uh, Mm, you could kind of have an AST for functions and if while. We don't have an AST even for if and while. That's what's interesting. I already explained that. Uh, for if and while, like specifically for while, we just don't have an AST. You may think that we do, but we don't. There is no AST to represent this thing. Uh, while is just a label, a go-to label. All right. Do is a conditional jump. It looks at the top of the stack after the condition has been executed, and if it's true, it falls through and continues executing the body. Uh, and if it's false, it jumps to the address after end, right? It jumps to the, the to this instruction. You see, it's, it's an operation that just jumps either here or here. And end is an unconditional jump that always jumps to while. Right. This is a label, this is a conditional jump, this is unconditional jump. We don't have an AST to represent even that. It kind of looks like a construction that have an AST, but it doesn't have AST. That's the beauty of this thing. Uh, it only looks like it has a structure and AST, but it doesn't. We don't have any AST uh, when we are compiling this language. Uh, two, 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 two. Two, 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 two. Why not write the compiler in Nim? Because we already wrote it in Python. Mm -mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Do you plan to add support for libraries and ports? What does it mean? What kind of feature do you need to have a library support? And what prevents us to write libraries in Porth right now? Like, that's the more interesting questions. Like, what does it mean to have a library support? Uh, that's a really strange question. I don't understand. Will there be dynamic linking? Maybe, probably. Uh, we'll see. Mm. 
what Porth will be used for? It will be used for writing software uh, because it's a programming language. Programming languages are used to write programs. That's what the programming languages are usually used for. Uh, any plans for writing bigger programs in Porth? Yes. Um, can you do file operations now? Yes. Uh, we implemented a cut, cut utility, cat, not cut, cat utility in Porth. So this is how cat uh, looks like. Right. So if you compile this entire thing, uh, right, so if you do example cat.porth, there we go. So then I do example cat. Uh, and as you can see, it just waits for your input, right? It uses uh, the standard input by default, and then you can close this entire thing and it closes it. Uh, or you can actually cat the source code of cat. And as you can see, it printed the uh, its own source code. So, and in fact, you can provide several files, right? Uh, because cat is uh, short for concatenation. Cat was designed to uh, concatenate several files. So you can provide several files as a command line argument, for example, hello world. Uh, let me actually see. So, eh. so this is going to be fourth, uh, right? And as you can see, uh, here stops the cat source code and starts the hello world uh, source code. And this program, is implemented entirely in Porth. This is what you can do in terms of interacting with operating system in Porth. Right, so there we go. So this is a cat utility and it's around uh, 35 lines of code, right? It's a very simple cat utility, but it's like it's around uh, 35 lines of code. So this is uh, kind of stuff you can do um, by just, you know, doing uh, syscalls, right? So uh, I even showed that on Twitter and I show that pretty much every stream. Uh, I also wrote a Game of Life example entirely in Porth, which is semi-interactive. This program is written entirely in Porth. Entirely in Porth. And the, this program is not uh, some sort of a bytecode or interpreted script or anything like that. If you take a look at this file, uh, it is an elf 64 bit executable, which is statically linked. It's a statically linked executable, which doesn't depend on anything. It doesn't even depend on libc. This is what our uh, compiler generated. This is what you can do in this language. It's not much, but this is what you can do. So. And we're already starting to rewrite this language in itself. Uh, um, mm. I think the else node in dot is wrong at the moment. Should it have two branches? Why? Why should it have two branches? Mm, so let's take a look at the um, add the uh, the simple program, I suppose, right? So do we have a foo? Uh, where is the foo port? Right. So we're going to have a condition 110 less if do. Uh, we're going to print something like yes. Uh, puts. I do want to actually include scd.port. Uh, then I'm going to do something like no. And I'm also going to do puts. And I'm going to end this entire stuff. So I think this will compile, right? So this consumes on the stack and none of the branches actually modify the stack. So this is a very simple program, right? So and if I try to maybe simulate this program, right? Maybe I'm gonna compile this program, right? Uh, there we go. So it prints yes. If I swap around these two arguments, uh, it will print no. Okay, so for now it's gonna be just yes. Uh, and on top of that, let's generate the control flow graph uh, and uh, take a look at it. So, uh, let me take a look. so this is going to be the chromium. Uh, here it is. So uh, else, if you take a look at else. Uh, so I think yes or no, they do expand to a very long sequence of operations. So I would like to probably change this entire thing to something like 69 print and 420 print, right? So to keep the entire thing a little bit smaller, if you know what I'm talking about. Right, now it's a little bit smaller and it's a little bit easier for us to handle. Right, you see, um, else always jumps to the end. El, uh, else always jumps to the end. And two branches in here uh, are coming from do. So essentially, all right,
right? When the execution comes to do, if the condition is true, it will fall through and continue execution. And as soon as it reaches else, it will jump to end. So the execution will go do 69 print else end. If it's false, do will jump to the value after else. So an execution will, execution will go 420, print, and then end. So else acts like a conditional jump as the end of the then branch, so it doesn't fall through into else and jumps straight into end. Yet again, there is no any AST or anything like that. All of these keywords are effectively operations. Some of them are labels, some of them conditional jumps, and some of them unconditional jumps. And the control flow is essentially uh, visualizes that, visualizes where conditional and unconditional jumps jump to and stuff like that. Does it make sense? Uh. Mm -mm. All right. Mm. Mm. Why did you make it that the operators are after the numbers? Because it's a reverse polish notation right first of all this kind of thing is called a reverse polish notation polish notation reverse polish notation you can read about this thing in here if you're interested so this is the first thing uh, and i'm going to put this kind of stuff in the description right second of all uh the language is from the family of concatenative languages concatenative programming right so the reason why the language looks the way it looks is because that's how you do concatenative programming with the reverse polish notation. So, yeah. Uh, LucaSig11, thank you so much for uh, tier 1 subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic Porth Club. How about that? How about that? So, all right, I think I want to make a small break. Uh, and after the break, we're going to try to implement the um, LIF keyword, right? So essentially what I want to add, uh, I want to add uh, stuff like LIF. Uh, as far as I know, uh, I actually added support for LIF keywords to the editor, right? So it should be already there. Here it is. I, I just didn't update the mode, the Emacs mode that I'm using right now. So let me actually do something like Emacs local. I'm going to copy the Porth mode in here and uh, I'm going to just um, re-evaluate the buffer. And if I go to here, uh, so maybe I'm going to revert the file. There we go. So now I have a leaf support, right? So essentially, I want to do things like this, right? So we're going to also have elif. And elif is going to be like a combination of else and if, right? So it's going to be, it's more of a, like a combination of else and and, I suppose, right? And it will allow us to have like this if else chains without uh, a lot of ends at the end. Because right now, if you want to have an else if chain, uh, you kind of stuck with doing something like, um, just a second, something like this, which is kind of meh, right? Which is kind of meh. It would be nice if we could just do uh, something like this, right? Like in Python. Mm. It would be way nicer, but unfortunately, right now, our language does not support that. Unfortunately, right now, our language does not support that. Okay, so let's make a small break and um, 